Today, we are going to be taking a look at the best practices for multimodal RAG in 2025. Previously, if you're doing RAG over a combination of images and text, you would have an embedding model for your text retrieval and an embedding model for your image retrieval. But even if you were able to make a good retrieval system over your images and text, this wouldn't be that useful in practice because before VLMs or vision language models weren't that effective at processing images. Now in the past few months, there's been a lot of progress in VLMs. So now large language models can process both images and text together effectively. And this allows for more sophisticated RAGs pipelines where we're fetching both images and text and processing and giving answers with all of this information. In this video, I'll go over how I would implement a multimodal RAG pipeline right now in the beginning of 2025. I'll go over how to implement retrieval over images and text and how to feed it into a VLM for a robust answer. So how do you do RAG in 2025? Well, this is the old way. And the old way is pretty simple. We have a text index in our vector DB. We have an image index. And when a user has a query, we query the image embedding model, get an image embedding. We search the image index and we get some image results. And then we do the same exact thing with a text embedding model. And then we search a text index and then we combine the results. But there are a few problems with this. The one thing is that Combining these two indexes isn't necessarily trivial. Let's say you have some image results and some text results. How do you know which ones you actually want to show and in what order? This is very challenging. Another is uh, performance can be low. So it's very challenging to create a good search system where you're actually showing relevant content from both with this method. And another problem is that it's inconvenient. Now you're managing two separate indexes when you could just as easily manage one with the next method. One advantage of this is that you can optimize individual indexes, which means let's say you have a text index. Well, you can make this text index, let's say like HNSW, and then you can make this image index flat. So now you can get really uh, exhaustive searches on your image index and you get really fast searches on your text index. But this isn't that important in practice in many cases. But there are many times when you actually do want to do this. Now, what's the new way that you could do in 2025? Well, uh, researchers have been working really hard. And what they discovered is that you get better performance if you just keep everything in a single index in many cases. What that means is that you have a single text plus image index. And this index, it has like text and image metadata. So it has text, image, metadata attached. So what happens when a user searches is a user has some query and this query is usually text and it's going to go through a multimodal embedding model. And then you're going to search the single index and get combined results. This way you get all the text that is relevant you get all the images that are relevant and they are displayed in an order that makes sense. Now, typically you're doing RAG, so maybe the order doesn't matter, but you need to make sure that you don't have any failed retrievals, which means that you don't fail to get relevant images or you don't fail to get relevant text. And this is very good at this. One example of um, a place where this is really convenient is PDF search. Let's say you have a bunch of PDFs well, parsing this PDFs can be done with an LLM with something like Llama Parse, where you extract the text and tables. But it's much easier in practice to actually just embed the PDFs as images. And then you have a bunch of PDFs in your single index. And you can search them, the multimodal model. Well, this is great. But one area where this might not work well is something like social media posts. So for social media posts, you have texts and images that are kind of separate. And you generally don't want to embed this whole thing as an image. So how do you deal with that specific scenario? Because this way doesn't handle it very well. Because you can't combine text and images separately and create a single embedding. Well, that's what I'm, I'm guessing will happen soon in 2025. So very soon we'll be able to 
take some text and some images and just plug and chug them into an embedding model and get an embedding that makes sense. So what that means is, let's say you have a lot of LinkedIn posts that you want to search, for example, a social media search engine. You can just take the text, take the image that are part of the post and use a single index to search that. So that's something that is likely coming in the next few months in 2025. So that's something you can expect. But for now, we have to live with this kind of situation. This is kind of how we have to do multimodal search in 2025. Not necessarily because there are other strategies like these. There are a few more strategies that I won't mention in this video, but these are the three main ways to kind of approach multimodal search as of now. So let's actually build a system based on the second uh, example. And it's gonna look a little bit like this. We're gonna download some data. We're gonna prepare images and text. And then we're gonna use the Voyage AI multimodal embedding model to individually embed the images and the text. So we have some images and the images uh, look like this. And we have some text that looks like this. And what's gonna come out is this right here. So we're gonna get some metadata to the paths of the images and text, and we're gonna get some embeddings. And notice that this is a single data frame. We're gonna treat the images and embeddings as one single data type, kind of. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually store these embeddings into a KDBI database. And when the user generates a query embedding, it's gonna look a little bit like this. It's gonna look like a query vector. And this multimodal embedding model works for text and images. So we could easily embed the user's text and search both modalities at the same time. And then we do a similarity search on this single index and retrieve the relevant data. And this relevant data is presented in an ordering that makes sense. And because this new method has been shown by research to have very accurate results for multimodal search, we're gonna be sure that our RAG is gonna be pretty accurate. Then finally, we're gonna combine the retrieved data with a prompt. And then we're gonna use a Gemini vision model to generate. So because the output of this step right here, retrieve relevant data, that is both images and text, we actually need a vision model to do RAG because the vision model is gonna take in the images and text and output a text answer to the user's question. And then at the end of it, we're gonna clean up and drop the KDBI table to conserve resources. So which tools are we using here? Well, we're using Google AI Studio for the LLM API. That's gonna be our multimodal LLM. We're using KDBI AI as our cloud vector database. Now, uh, all of the tools here are free and have very good free tiers. And we're gonna use Voyage AI as our multimodal embedding model API. Now, Voyage AI has one of the best performing multimodal embedding models right now. So it makes sense to use their API and their API has very um, reasonable uh, free tier limits. So we can embed quite a lot of data and not really worry about pricing. So let's get started. Let's dive right into the Colab notebook. So this Colab notebook is very simple. We're just gonna go through the entire steps that I outlined uh, just now. We're gonna install the KDBI client, and then we're gonna install uh, Voyage AI. I already have it installed, so I'm gonna skip these steps. Um, and now let's import some dependencies. And the embedding model that we're gonna use is Voyage Multimodal 3. So it's important that we use a multimodal embedding model for this step. I've already set my Voyage AI API key. And here, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna actually download some images and text from a GitHub repo. So let's just download, we're downloading here, we're just fetching this information from this uh, GitHub repo right here. And we can actually look at what this looks like. Okay, it's a bunch of images and it's some text. Okay, so our text looks like this. Great. Next, let's define some helper functions. So we have some helper functions like read text from file, uh, data to embedding, where we actually embed some data. This could be either text or images, and query to embedding, which takes text and generates an embedding. Now let's prepare our data. So what's happening here is we're taking our images, we're taking our text, and 
what we're doing is we're just concatenating them into a data frame and we're getting a bunch of embeddings. So let's generate some embeddings. And what we see is we get 18 embeddings. Now let's add the embeddings to our data frame. So now we have the path to the image or text. We have the media type, and then we have our embeddings themselves. So let's actually insert that into our vector database. So we're going to import KDBI client as a dependency, and that lets us interact with our cloud KDBI database. To get a KDBI API key, you just go to KDBI, sign up for free, and it's very straightforward uh, to get a KDBI API key. I already have my API key and cloud endpoint set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to a session. And then I'm going to connect to the default database in that session. So you can define multiple databases, you can define multiple tables in every database. And our table schema is going to look like this. We're going to have our media type, we're going to have our path, and we're going to have our embeddings. So let's define a table schema and let's create an index inside of our table. Now we only have one index and that's going to be for both our text and image embeddings, which are created by the same embedding model. And we're going to create a QFLAT index. And this is a pretty special index because it's an on disk index, which lets us conserve memory. And the advantage of this also is that it's an exhaustive search. So with something like HNSW, it would be an approximate search. So as our amount of data scales up, we could do an approximate search, but here we have so little data that a flat search is fine. And we have 1,024 dimensions, which is the number of dimensions outputted by our embedding model. So first, let's make sure that our table doesn't exist, and then let's create this table right here. So now we have a table inside our database. And next, we could just insert all of the data from our data frame into our uh, vector database. Now this is very easy to do with a KDBI client. What we did is we just passed a bunch of rows of the data frame. And now we could query our, our table and see that we have all this data already in there. So we have our uh, path, we have our image type, and we have embeddings. Now, another thing you could do is you could store the base64 uh, version of the image. You could store the text itself. But for this specific tutorial, we didn't do that. But you could just as easily do that. Next, let's query our vector database to retrieve the most relevant data. So what we're going to do is we're going to define some helper functions. And these helper functions, all they do is they view our results or they search our table. So we define the index we're going to search and return three results right here. Now that we have all our helper functions defined, what we can do is we can uh, create a query embedding. So we have a query brown animal with antlers. And let's turn that into an embedding so we could search our vector database. So we get an embedding that looks like this. And now let's search. Let's actually search our table with this embedding. And this is what we get. We get some deer, we get some images of deer, and we get some texts about deer, which is exactly what we want. This is a multimodal search. We get some text, we get some images. But the problem is that text LLM cannot process the images and understand them. That's why we need uh, a vision model. And before we go into vision models and how you can uh, add one to your application, let's try another query. So here we have green and yellow insect with that cocoons and we run a search. And what we see is that we have a green and yellow insect or we have this caterpillar here and we have some text about caterpillars. So because this is a semantic search, it understands that a green and yellow insect is going to be a caterpillar. All right, we've done a multimodal search, but let's do rag. So in order to do rag, we need some packages installed. So we have Langchain, Google Gen AI, we have Streamlit, we have Pillow. Um, we have some packages that we need here, but um, we'll get into them in a, t in a second. The thing we need to define is a Google API key. So a Google API key allows us to interact with their API for the vision LLM. And how you get that is you just go here to the Google AI Studio um, and you just click create an API key and you get an API key. It's actually super easy. It used to be more difficult to work with Google's LLM APIs, but they made it 
uh, a lot easier than it was before. Now let's import this google.generative AI uh, library and let's configure my API key that I've already set. And let's choose our model, which is gonna be Gemini 1.5 Flash, which is a super cheap multimodal model. It's great for transcriptions, captions, anything multimodal, it's very effective and cheap. And let's define our rag function. So what this does is that it uh, takes some image, it takes some text and returns our uh, image and text. So our prompt is gonna be, what can you tell me about caterpillars and images? What species are they? Now, this is a complex prompt that a user might make. What we're gonna do is we're gonna send the following to Gemini. We're gonna attach a little bit more context on what we wanna do. You'll answer the given prompt using the attach content and the prompt. And then we're gonna add that information, the image and the text we retrieved to this prompt. And then finally, we're gonna get a result. So let's run this. And this is our retrieved data. So we have some retrieved data and we have a prompt that uh, includes this retrieved data. Now let's actually generate a rag answer considering our prompt and our retrieved data. So we have our retrieved data in this variable and let's generate some content or an answer to the question with it. And that's exactly what we get here. So based on the provided images and description, here's what we can say about our caterpillars and we understand our images and we understand the text that was retrieved. And that's it. We just did rag on multimodal data. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it was helpful in your path to creating a multimodal rag system. Now, a lot of things are changing very quickly right now. Embedding models are getting better at embedding text and images together. VLMs are getting better at understanding images and you could pass more and more images into VLMs. So this is very exciting. It's changing very rapidly, but I imagine we're gonna see a lot more development in the VLM and multimodal rack space in the coming months.